Hey, welcome back, everybody. I'm Drone Tech. Uh, for those of you that have not been following this January 6th sham commission, and I can't say that I've been following it very closely, it seems like most people aren't, and that's driving the Democrats and their media absolutely insane right now. But I did want to go through a couple of these exchanges that I found interesting and entertaining. Welcome to the Rules Committee. It's good Thank to see you. you. Good to um, see you again. I, one thing I do think I want to correct um, is that Chairman Thompson and Vice Chair Cheney never said that the purpose of this was to bring criminal referrals, uh, that the purpose of the investigation was for the purpose of the investigation is to get to the truth of the causes and the events constituting the attack on Congress and on the Capitol. Okay. <laughs> Before we get into this, I, I got to stop it here. Uh, first off, there was no attack. Tens of thousands of people peacefully marched on that day, most, mostly peaceful. Uh, you had a handful of people that got rowdy with the riot cops. Some windows were broken. Most of the people were let in by the Capitol Police. They walked around. They stayed within the velvet ropes. And there were even a lot of Trump supporters who stopped other people from doing property damage. And you can see some evidence of this in the video taken by that BLM activist that got paid by CNN and MSNBC. Do not, do not deface the statutes. We had one unarmed woman shot and killed for no apparent reason, and this was swept under the rug as a heroic act by a coward. And another important detail about this whole January 6th sham is that the media instantly started lying about it right off the bat. They claimed that one of the Capitol officers was killed along with five other people, and every single one of those turned out to be unrelated to the riot. Unfortunately though, the drive-by media tactics had done their damage and it reverberates to this day with media and randos on Twitter still making these claims. Another truth that completely eludes Ratskin here is the fact that not a single person has been charged with insurrection or an attack. Lastly, the FBI found no proof in their investigations of coordination or any plan to quote, overturn an election by force. Like Dems and their media keep repeating over and over like a big lie. We're gonna get right back into this fiery exchange between Ratskin and Matt Gates, but first, it's never been more important to have an emergency food supply. These days, the future is still more uncertain than ever. That's why people who know what's coming are using today to prepare. You can't wait until the last moment. By then, it's too late. The most important thing you need is long-term storage emergency food. And saving $50 is impossible to pass up, but supplies are limited. So go to www.preparewithdronetech.com right now and stock up. That's preparewithdronetech.com. There's no time to lose. Do it now. Here's the question I want to ask you. Let's, let's just start with basics. Do you accept that Joe Biden won the 2020 presidential election? I accept that Joe Biden is the president. Do you accept that he won the, the <laughs> election by more than 7 million votes and defeated Donald Trump by 306 to 232 in the Electoral College, a margin that Donald Trump called a landslide when he beat Hillary Clinton by the same numbers? I think that, that our now. election okay. was uniquely polluted by these indiscriminate mail-in ballots. I think that this was the first time in America's history where the mailbox yep. beat the okay, ballot. Okay, do you box. think there's- I'm sorry, but this is just unreal that this is America in 2021. We have a Democrat here questioning another elected representative about his loyalty to the current president. He's demanding a purity test of sorts here that Gates acknowledge Brandon's greatness and his legitimacy. Now, beyond the fact that this just reeks of authoritarianism or something that we would see happening in a third world country, the guy demanding this declaration of legitimacy spent the last four years trying to undo the results of an election by claiming that the president was some sort of a Russian spy that stole the election with Putin. Donald Trump is the hoax perpetrated on the Americans by the Russians. Yeah, he got up and said that Trump is a Russian hoax. That there's a lot of uncertainty. He said that Trump is a Russian hoax. We have it on camera. Okay. I we know there are all these meetings, you know, between the son-in-law, Jared Kushner, and Kislyak, and all these Russian agents. And, you know, I don't know whether it was a money-making operation. I don't know whether they were actually colluding to distort the news and to frame the campaign. But that's why we need an independent commission. In France, they hacked and trashed Macron 
in a bid to elect the right-wing immigrant bashing Marine Le Pen. You said that uh, Russia hacked the, f attempted to hack Macron in the French elections. Yeah, well, we know that. I mean, I, I mean the Washington Post has reported that the French cyber intelligence agency has said that it's not true. Well, I, mean, I haven't read this article, but, but oh, certainly Macron is convinced of it. It's not true. <laughs> yeah, well, certainly Macron is convinced of it, and everything that we read before was well, I mean, it was reported days ago. <laughs> the, the Associated Press. Well, so, you know, this guy, Ratsky, is a total hack job. He's been peddling conspiracy theories for years now, going back four years. He attempted to undo a democratic election that he didn't like the results of with conspiracy theories and disinformation from Russia, which he helped disseminate across the country, and this attempt to impeach Trump to undo the election. Of Kevin McCarthy negotiated an agreement for an independent outside commission with five Democrats, five Republicans, equal subpoena power, right down the middle. And yet Donald Trump decided he didn't like it because he doesn't want anybody investigating January the 6th. So he turned against it, and then the Republican leadership flipped over and turned against it. I think you voted against that commission. Why did you vote against that commission? For many of the reasons that I've discussed today, that the focus on January 6th, the So you don't want to know. Is unwarranted. You don't want to know anymore. Look, I think we have. Okay, let me ask you about that. We have a process in Article 3 where the courts <laughs> get to determine those issues. If the United yeah. States government brings charges, people can resolve those in the courts. You don't want to know. That's not okay with you guys because you want to Gates, politicize okay. it because you I know you too well for this. You don't want to know the answer. You don't want you to know. Have no, no, so let me, Mr. Gates, let me ask you. Let me ask you a serious question. The stenographer is trying. I just, I got to stop here because it's funny to me that he keeps screaming at him that he doesn't want to know, but he won't let Matt Gates answer any of his questions. Like, he doesn't want to know Matt Gates's answers to his questions, or he's scared of what he's going to say. He, his whole strategy seems to be ask him a question that makes it look like he's some sort of a bad actor, and then do not let him respond because he's going to have good responses. So this whole thing is just maddening because as we all know, any election that Democrats lose, they claim is illegitimate. As I've pointed out to you guys many times in past videos, in 2001, when Democrats lost to Bush, tens of thousands of them rioted and actually attacked Bush's motorcade. They were trying to stop the inauguration. They actually attacked the motorcade on its way to the inauguration. And I don't remember any calls for hearings or cries of insurrection or attacks on democracy. The insidiousness of this theatrical performance being put on by the Democrats is plain to see. And if we had a true free press that wasn't completely corrupted, they would be hammering the Democrats on that. Mr. Gates, let me ask you, ask you this. Um, let's say that the exact same attack had taken place. Let's assume 145 of our officers were beaten in the face with baseball bats, steel pipes, Confederate battle flags, I just, you notice how they try to make everything sound as horrible as possible. Bats and pipes and battle flags. Like, they, 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 they really try to emphasize things that really, when you stand back, are not that big a deal. I mean, look at any left-wing uh, protests over the last few years during the, uh, the, the Trump years. Uh, they use pipes. They use weapons. In Portland, they straight up are using bombs in some cases. And I'm sure that the 2,000 officers that were injured during the two or three years of rioting by Democrats when Trump was president and was actually facilitated and cheered on by the Democrats and their media was completely different, which is exactly why we've had no hearings on those riots, etc. Let's say they interrupted the counting of electoral college votes for the first time in American history. Oh my God. They delayed the count? I, that, that's like worse than 9-11. I have a really good memory, so I remember way back in ancient history when Democrats invaded the confirmation of a Supreme Court justice and delayed that. But I'm sure that that was completely different. For four or five hours, let's say marauders insurrectionists came into our building and chanted for hanging Vice President <gasps> Mike Pence, but- <gasps> What? Oh my God, they chanted? Were they chanting loudly? Because that's an even bigger threat to democracy. And as we all well know, nobody's ever called for violence against Republicans like Trump, George Bush, Rand Paul, or any conservatives. And even if they did, well, <laughs> you know. Let's just change the hypothetical. This one element, Mr. Gates, let's say it wasn't the Proud Boys. Let's say it wasn't the Oath Keepers. Let's say it wasn't the Three Percenters. Let's say it wasn't the Aryan Nations. Let's say it was Al-Qaeda or ISIS. Would you really not want an investigation into what happened 
with that attack on America? If Al Qaeda or <laughs> attack ISIS on America. attacked the U.S. Capitol, I would think that the least capable institution to bring them to justice would be this January 6th committee. You would not want, <laughs> I would far prefer the legal process to play out or the military process to play out. If the American people had to rely on the Congress itself as an institution to protect us from ISIS without law enforcement, without the military, yeah. we would be in deep, deep trouble. Okay, <laughs> is that a new position for you and Mr. Jordan? Because I know you guys- It's a new hypothetical. Involved. Yeah, you- <laughs> Oh my God, nailed it. I mean, of course, Ratskin's going to interrupt when he's making a really good point. Uh, but I mean, Al Qaeda and ISIS, if that was Al Qaeda and ISIS that had done that, they would have used car bombs and AK 47s, not fists and flagpoles or battle flags. You've been involved in a lot of different investigations, both of you. For example, does Benghazi ring a bell? I was, I, I believe, a law student at the Great William and Mary Law School. All right. Well, let me, but, let me, but before I come to Mr. Jordan, let me ask you this. Um, do you think that people who are subpoenaed by a court or by the United States Congress, who think in their head that they might have a privilege or someone else might have a privilege, have the right just not to show up? I believe that Pete Bannon says, you know what? I'm guilty as hell. I incriminate myself. In some surreal parallel universe, a... Uh, presidential executive privilege, even though he didn't even work for the White House at that point. He'd been fired by Donald Trump in August of 2017. This is in January of 2021, in December of 2020. But even if he thought that, he's got to come before the committee and he has to plead it. Do you not agree with that? No, I think that... No, the, honestly, did, well, do you not well, agree on, with that? Now, Mr. Yeah. Raskin, I allowed you to speak and I didn't interrupt you. I hope I'm giving the same opportunity. I, just give me the honest answer. I, I, the honest answer is that the McGahn litigation that you and I both follow closely as members of the Judiciary Committee actually is the path forward. McGahn didn't have to show up to assert that he was waiting for legal... The process. president yeah. asserted oh, no, no, executive no, no, no. privilege now, on his now behalf. Now you're the one giving challenges to the stenographer. So, uh, yeah, no, 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 I'm, I'm telling you, wait a second. I, I'm going to elaborate but, on your, your answer no, no, here. But I haven't even given my full answer yet. Yeah, it's not how it works. The rules can be, Mr. Gates. Just, just to follow this then. Well, wait, the president. Do I, do I get to respond to these? Mr. Things? Gates, I'm going to give you the chance to respond. Well, it respond to this. It sounds like President you're Trump on asserted executive privilege. President Trump asserted executive privilege for McGahn. President Biden has not asserted. I believe there is. There, has I, not asserted yeah, but, executive yeah, but privilege. President Trump but, does, has initiated litigation. Look, the so reason you all waited on McGahn is because the Russia hoax wasn't going well for you. And the reason you're okay, not waiting right. now is because you have no other legislation blah, blah, or blah. other solutions okay. for the country. All right. That's <laughs> why you, Jordan, let me switch you to had you. the McGahn playbook, but you've ditched it because you guys need January 6th so bad. Okay. Mr. Yes. Yeah. All right. Well. I mean, it's he just summed it up right there. It's all they got right now because the midterms aren't looking so good. I mean, and that's what it comes down to. I mean, we know for a fact that none of this is principled or needed because we've never seen any hearings or investigations in any of these other past incidents that I talked about here. And on that point, why have we never had any hearings into the attempted assassination of half the GOP Senate? On June 14th, 2017, a radicalized Democrat targeted and shot five Republicans, almost killing Steve Scalise, while the shooter yelled, this is for health care. Now, despite this man being an active Bernie supporting Democrat and having a kill list of Republicans, the FBI classified it as suicide by cop. They actually defended this classification up until April of 2021, then in May, finally admitted it was domestic terror. Error, but very quietly. I mean, can you even imagine if a Republican had shot up a bunch of Democrats? Do you think that we would ever hear the end of it? Of course not. That date, June 14th, 2017, would be seared into the minds of every American. So where are the hearings for that? Well, both Democrats and the media had a big hand in demonizing Republicans for their opposition to Obamacare, comparing them to suicide bombers and repeating the conspiracy over and over that Republicans wanted people to die. I think we're starting to see why there's no hearings or scrutinizing over what exactly radicalized this man. The media and the Democrats were allowed to just sweep it under the rug and Republicans don't get a pass because they allowed it to happen. I will say they deserve some credit, I guess, for getting the FBI to change the classification, but come on. All right, folks, that's all I have for this one. As always, please, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, it really helps this channel. And if you have some extra time, let me know what you think in the comments.